my beautiful kings and queens. 91-year-old Dr. Edward Robinson, Jr., attorney, historian, author, and professor, headed the Philadelphia School District Committee on African and African American Studies for four years. He co-authored the guidebook, The World of Africans and Afro-Americans, the groundbreaking curriculum that led the way for the teaching of African American history in the public schools. He co-authored the seminal book, Journey of the Songhai People, which was published in 1970 and still popular today as part of the curriculum of several schools. He co-authored the book, Twas the Night Before Kwanzaa, and also produced the best-selling historical album, Black Rhapsody, which was produced in 1987 and is still selling today. He was awarded the coveted silver medal of the Poor Richards Club of Benjamin Franklin, which included among its recipients, Sir Winston Churchill and President Charles de Gaulle. From his earliest life, he learned of his maternal family's Nigerian background of wealth and splendor. His great-great-great-grandfather in Benin City, Nigeria, was both a lawyer and a sculptor. His great-great-great-grandparents lived in a beautiful three-story home of polished stone. He learned of his granddad's murder by English soldier thieves who stole his sculpture and gold. His widow, grandmother Nzinga, was put on board a ship in 1813 to be brought as a captive to America. And this abolitionist ship, just luckily for me, captured the ship and towed it to Trenton, New Jersey. So therefore, my great-great-grandmother and her newborn baby, Diane, were welcomed by the white people of Trenton, New Jersey and adopted, each one of the 247 families were adopted by white abolitionists in New Jersey. And we were adopted by a white family named Stewart. He learned all this from his great-grandmother, Nzinga's granddaughter, and her daughter, his grandmother. So she told that story to Mary Diane Thomas, who I was living two doors from my great-grandmother, who's my great-grandmother. And that's how I found out. Then one day, he went to see a motion picture called Tarzan of the Apes, and there he found out about the terrible showings of Africa and its people. He then understood how the lies in the pictures had an influence on the minds of African Americans. So what they did was use drama, which is the sword that changes attitude. See, it's all attitude, you know. all attitude. And drama <clears throat> is the sword that reaches into the subconscious, pierces that thick wall, and goes down into the subconscious and changes attitude. Drama. So they use drama. In 1968, he was teaching a class in executive management at Dillard University in New Orleans. He invited his class of insurance executives to go down into the French Quarter to observe an auction block. I began telling them about the people who were on that auction block were great doctors because Imhotep was the first doctor. He was the one that taught Hippocrates. All the eyes began widening and on that auction block, there were great mathematicians. A black man, whose name was Ahmed, created algebra 3,700 years ago. As they were standing before the auction block, a vision appeared before Dr. Robinson. A vision of beautiful people, dressed beautifully, beautiful galas on the head, and beautiful satin and velvet. And they were moving around, I could hear the murmuring. They wore finely wrought leather shoes, and I'm standing with my eyes wide open. And then suddenly, from that crowd on the auction block, a voice boomed. Edward, tell them who we are. But from that moment on, I was committed. It seemed as though the ancestors had said, you are the one. You are the one that's got to tell. In studying the effects of the transatlantic slave trade and its associated process of dehumanizing Africans and African culture in the eyes of the world, Dr. Robinson has developed a systematic solution to the racial problem. And America suffers with what Dr. Ed Robinson Jr., a Philadelphia historian, authority on African and African-American affairs, 
and father of African Genesis calls the problem. And the problem is that we and all the rest of the people in the society, the Asians, the whites, the Korean, everybody, including black people, despise our Africanness, despise everything that originated below the Sahara Desert. And what was that psychology? It's called a psychological law called paired associate learning. Paired associate learning. That's P-A-I-R-E-D, not P-E-A-R. P-A-I-R-E-D. When you pair, when you put together the things that you don't like with somebody you don't like, then the two become synonymous. When you put together something you do like with somebody, with somebody you do like, they become synonymous. When you put blacks always in a criminal line and always in a ghetto neighborhood, always killing each other, then they are paired together. When you put whites always in beautiful surroundings, marvelous moral standards, then those two become synonymous. They call it purple. What big subliminal impact was in color purple? Well, because it's subliminal, out of a group of 500, uh, nobody noticed it. What did Steven Spielberg do? And I don't think he did it, I, I did it consciously. Look at the color of the men. Look at the color. Think about the color of the various men of Mr the color of the girl's father, the color of Shug's boyfriend. Each one, the more richly pigmented he was, the more bestial he was. The less, put it the other way, the less pigmented he was, the more civil and courteous and humane he was. Subconscious did, and that impact on the subconscious was much more devastating than you could even realize. We kill each other because of it. Out of 10,600 deaths last year of blacks killing blacks, 6,000 of them were committed by young men between 15 and 24. For now over nothing. He looked at me wrong. We hate each other because of the poison that's enveloped our minds from the motion pictures and from the TV and from the school textbooks. What condition are we trying to change? We're trying to change the effects, the effects of racism. The effects is that we have disproportionate illness. What disproportionate illness? Well, you can go to a laundry list from heart disease to incarceration and trace every one of them back to the lack of racist things. His solution addresses the problem with a sustained profusion of information through dramatic presentations that teach self-respect through cultural and historical truth, which Dr. Robinson has dubbed African Genesis. No question, when we presented the African part of the missing part of their knowledge, their culture, to our children, their marks go right up. Their intelligence soars, and their behavior becomes exemplary. But we had another example at Lead School, where we did the same thing for a year. And the kids' marks just went up, and their behavior became exemplary. His resolve became clearer to not only write a book on his beloved area of West Africa from whence his family originated, but start a national movement to teach teachers and have it incorporated into the curricula of all schools. After years of disappointments, Dr. Robinson's efforts were instrumental in crafting the 2005 Philadelphia School District's curriculum policy, making it mandatory for Philadelphia public school students to take an African-American history course in order to graduate from high school. So 
page after page that tell about the beauty and grandeur of the Songhai Empire and how it was invaded in 1591 and our mothers and fathers who were prisoners of war prisoners of war not slaves were put on board ship and brought over here in chains. Dr. Robinson was influential in the founding of the Dessert Club, an African-American youth organization by entertainment attorney Helen Salahuddin and husband Ali Salahuddin. He wrote the Dessert Club curriculum, which was designed to enlighten youth about their great African heritage while increasing their positive ethnic consciousness and self-esteem. Since 1997, the organization has graduated and taken nearly 3,000 students and adults to Africa. Robinson has recently written five screenplays based on the greatness of the ancient Songhai and Egyptian kingdoms and is developing his Whispers of the Medallion story as a feature film. The movie will trigger the ultimate solution to the 400-year-old problem facing Africans the world over by using the same powerful tool used by our enemies, our captors, which they used to create the problem in the first place. They'll be just using it to turn it right back on. And that's the movie, the motion picture. He has created the African Genesis Media Group to promote the African Genesis theory and coordinate the efforts of these TV, film, and video productions that were created or influenced by his vision. Doc, can you tell us what you need us to do? Us meaning all of us who are in this room and all of us who are watching this right now. Yes. Get us 100,000 emails of people who think like you do. That's all you have to do. We'll take it from there. We'll take it from there. Yeah, because if you do that, We've got laid out how we're going to do the rest. How we're going to make it. At 91 years young, Dr. Robinson is a true Renaissance man and a seemingly ageless phenomenon. He is a unique individual whose passion has driven him to dedicate over 65 years of his life to educate people in a manner that he believes will change the total society's perception about ancient Africa and the ancestral heritage of all Africans in the diaspora. When we do this subliminally and give to the world just like they did us, it's all subliminal. We lower the level of consciousness. We will change the world.